ています。Tracheal Intubation Dr. Jalal Mosin Adin, MBBS, DTCD, FCPS, Pulmonology, National Institute of Diseases of Chest and Hospital. Introduction. Tracheal intubation, usually simply referred to as intubation, is the placement of a flexible plastic tube into the trachea to maintain an open airway. It is frequently performed in critically injured, ill, or anesthetized patients to facilitate ventilation of the lungs and to prevent the possibility of asphyxia or airway obstruction. Commonly used route. The most widely used route is orotracheal, in which an endotracheal tube is passed through the mouth and vocal apparatus into the trachea. The tracheotomy, used primarily in situations where a prolonged need for airway support is anticipated. The following equipment may be needed for direct laryngoscopy, intravenous access, hemodynamic monitoring, stethoscope, pulse oximeter, end tidal carbon dioxide, et CO2, monitor, suction catheter attached to continuous suction, cardiac arrest cart with resuscitation medications rapid sequence intubation medications paralytic sedative and or dissociative agent defibrillator pre-oxygenation with nasal cannula or high flow nasal cannula hfn c bag valve mask with masks of various sizes direct laryngoscopy including laryngoscope Handle with batteries and laryngoscope blades of various sizes and shapes. Endotracheal tubes of various sizes malleable stylet 10cc syringe tape. Backup equipments. Laryngeal mask airway, L. M. A. Bougie, tracheal tube introducer. Crocothyrotomy tray. Magil forceps. An overview of procedure. Because it is an invasive and uncomfortable medical procedure, intubation is usually performed after administration of general anesthesia and a neuromuscular blocking drug. It can, however, be performed in the awake patient with local or topical anesthesia or in an emergency without any anesthesia at all. Intubation is normally facilitated by using a conventional Laryngoscope flexible fiber optic bronchoscope, or video laryngoscope to identify the vocal cords and pass the tube between them into the trachea instead of into the esophagus. Other and quad non invasive and quad devices which can be employed to assist in tracheal intubation are the laryngeal mask airway positioning. The head position should be optimized to get the best possible view of the vocal cords. The sniffing position has traditionally been considered the optimal position for direct laryngoscopy as it aligns the oral, pharyngeal, and laryngeal axes. This position is achieved by elevating the patient's head, extending the head at the neck in, aligning the ears horizontally with the sternal notch. In morbidly obese patients, roles may be Utilized to elevate the head until the external auditory meatus aligns with the sternal notch. Positioning of head during intubation and placement of laryngoscope, position of physician, and placement of laryngoscope, endotracheal tube. The tip of the endotracheal tube is positioned above the carina and sealed within the trachea so that the lungs can be ventilated equally. Traditionally, an endotracheal tube size of 7.0 is used for women, while an 8.0 is used for men. Variations in size depend on patient's height and whether they will require bronchoscopy. Bronchoscopy requires at least a 7.5 or 8.0 tube. For children, endotracheal tube size is selected using the equations. Size equals age divided by 44 for uncuffed tubes and size equals age 4 3.5 for cuffed tubes. Cuffed endotracheal tubes have become increasingly preferred for the pediatric population in recent years. 
The endotracheal tube is prepared by placing the stylet inside, straightening the tube proximally, and creating a 35-degree angle proximal to the cuff. The cuff is inflated with air via a syringe connected to a side port and should be tested for leaks. During preparation, there are a number of different types of double lumen endobronchial tubes that have endobronchial as well as endotracheal channels. These tubes have two separate channels and two separate openings. They incorporate an endotracheal lumen which terminates in the trachea and an endobronchial lumen, the distal tip of which is positioned 1 to 2 cm into the right or left principal bronchus stylets. An intubating stylet is a malleable metal wire designed to be inserted into the endotracheal tube to make the tube conform better to the upper airway anatomy of the specific individual. This aid is commonly used with a difficult laryngoscopy. Just as with laryngoscope blades, there are also several types of available stylets. Medicines are used for intubation, sedation for intubation, INJ propofol, usual emergency induction dose 1.5 mg per kilogram. Through IV, onset of action, 15 to 45 seconds, duration of action, 5 to 10 minutes, a ultra short acting drug suitable for hemodynamically stable patients. Paralytic drugs for intubation, INJ, succinylcholine, usual emergency induction dose. 1.5 mg per kilogram IV increase to 2 mg per kilogram IV, onset of action, 45 seconds, duration of action, 6 to 10 minutes. Bradycardia may occur. After repeated doses, have atropine ready if the event it occurs. Pre-oxygenation. If time permits, patients should be placed on 100% oxygen for 3 to 5 minutes, this measure may maintain satisfactory oxygenation in previously healthy patients for up to 8 minutes. Non-invasive ventilation, NIV, or high-flow nasal cannula, HFNC, can be used to aid preoxygenation. Even in apneic patients, such preoxygenation has been shown to improve arterial oxygen saturation and prolong the period of safe apneic time. Technique. The laryngoscope is held on the operator's left hand. Next, the operator slides the laryngoscope into the right side of the patient's mouth and advances inward while applying upward pressure at a 45-degree angle against the tongue. As the laryngoscope slides towards the back of the oropharynx, the operator can use the blade to push the tongue towards the left side of the mouth to make room for the advancement of the endotracheal tube, while keeping firm upward pressure on the laryngoscope with the left hand and avoiding bending the wrist, all the structures of the oropharynx are visualized until the vocal cords are exposed. If using a curved laryngoscope, the operator should visualize the epiglottis and place the blade tip in the vallecula. Applying firm, steady upward pressure at a 45-degree angle, the curved laryngoscope is used to lift the epiglottis and expose the vocal cords. Once the glottis is visualized, the operator will ask the respiratory assistant to place the endotracheal tube with the malleable stylet on the operator's right hand. The operator then inserts the endotracheal tube to the right of the laryngoscope blade and visualizes passage through the vocal cords. Some brands of endotracheal tubes have a marking proximal to the cuff that indicates the relative level of insertion through the vocal cords. If lifting of the epiglottis does not reveal the vocal cords, the operator may use her, his right hand to manipulate the airway. This technique often helps bring the glottis into view. Once the trachea's optimal position is achieved, the operator should request that the respiratory assistant's hand replace her, his hand to maintain that position, while the operator slides the endotracheal tube into place. After the trachea has been intubated, a 
balloon cuff is typically inflated just above the far end of the tube to help secure it in place. To prevent leakage of respiratory gases, and to protect the tracheobronchial tree from receiving undesirable material such as stomach acid, the tube is then connected to AT piece, anesthesia, breathing circuit, bag valve mask device, or a mechanical ventilator. Methods to confirm tube placement. No single method for confirming tracheal tube placement has been shown to be 100% reliable. The use of multiple methods for confirmation of correct tube placement is now widely considered to be the standard of care. Such methods include direct visualization as the tip of the tube passes through the glottis, or indirect visualization of the tracheal tube within the trachea using a device such as a bronchoscope. With a properly positioned tracheal tube, equal Bilateral breath sounds will be heard upon listening to the chest with a stethoscope, and no sound upon listening to the area over the stomach. Equal bilateral rise and fall of the chest wall will be evident with ventilatory excursions. A small amount of water vapor will also be evident within the lumen of the tube with each exhalation and there will be no gastric contents in the tracheal tube at any time. Ideally, at least one of the methods utilized for confirming tracheal tube placement will be a measuring instrument. Waveform capnography has emerged as the gold standard for the confirmation of tube placement within the trachea. The distal tip of a properly positioned tracheal tube will be located in the mid trachea, roughly 2 cm, 1 in, above the bifurcation of the carina. This can be confirmed by chest X-ray. Tracheal intubation. Learning. Pulmonology.